Hey, it's your old buddy the Rhino for Survival Skills 101. Here today to talk to you about what to put in your day pack when you go hiking. Now I got a couple dudes that are really interesting. Uh, one is Derek Randalls and the other is James Million. And these two guys uh, are part of the Olympic Project. The Olympic Project is over in uh, Washington. And the interesting thing about these guys is these two guys research Bigfoot. Now, whether you believe in Bigfoot or you don't, doesn't really matter. Who cares? What this video is about is about what to put in your day pack so when you go hiking uh, and you get lost, you know what, uh, what you got and what you need to survive. These guys spend five days a week out in the wilderness, uh, maybe even six, seven. You need to listen to them. Check these two guys out. I appreciate them doing this video. So, start right out here. Here's the first thing. Anytime I take a client, somebody, somebody hires us to take a hiking, this in my book is mandatory. It's just a basic walking stick. And a walking stick has a lot of uses. So today on our hike, we were doing some off-trail stuff and coming down some pretty, pretty steep grades. This walking stick right here can keep your balance and keep you from twisting your leg. Uh, it's just fantastic. Well, over any type of obstacles, you should always have a walking stick. So, and I'm actually really funny about it. If somebody hires me just to take them out, I won't take them unless they have one. The best reason for this thing right here is you can actually keep a cat off these. If it's a good hard walking stick, you can poke at it, you can smack it, you can do anything you want with it. So, walking stick, very, 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 very uh, necessary. Water, the main thing you need in your pack, for sure. I wouldn't get out of here without water, period. Yeah, if you get dehydrated, you're, you're in major trouble. So I always pack twice as much water as I think I'm going to need in, in just about any circumstance. you got to have water and you got to have a backup. If you run out of water, I think we showed this to a few of you guys earlier. This is the newest thing on the market. It's called a life straw. You can seriously stick this thing into a mud puddle and survive. You can stick it into a creek. You can stick it into a pond. You can stick it anywhere. It gets 90 anywhere. It's 99.9% .9 of all bacteria out of, out of what you're going to be consuming. So, and it goes through hundreds of gallons before it needs to be cleaned, and it can be cleaned, and it can be used again. So, mandatory in your backpack, or iodine, or a filter, something like that. So, like James said, water is probably the biggest thing. You can only go three days without water and you're dead. So, what's that? Rules of three. Yeah. So, let me start. Knowing your surroundings? Look at a map, know where the hell you're at before you just take off in the woods. Like, if you go in here, there's a trail. You have to cross the trail. If you cross that trail, head up in the woods, you got to cross it again. Don't cross it again unless you know where the hell you're going. You know, know where you're at at all times. Along with that, if you're going to go out in the woods, you're going to do Bigfoot research, go on an off-trail hike, make an itinerary. And make sure somebody knows where you're going. And when all possible, take somebody with you. I solo hike all the time, but quite honestly, solo hiking is stupid. Things happen. Legs get broken, strokes happen, heart attacks happen. So uh, first and foremost, try to get somebody to go with you at all times. Second, make an itinerary, leave that itinerary with somebody. You don't show back up on time, then they know where to start looking for you. These wonderful devices. You hit the mic on this, it'll tell every other one of these exactly where you're at. And these are very unique because they also are GPSs. This particular variety right here, I can turn this thing on, we can get satellites, and I can figure out where James is because it tells me. We'll walk you right to them. So, very, very important. I don't rely on these. I don't rely on anything with batteries. Uh, but they're great to have, you know. Survival, you know, hardcore survival is great, but there's so many great products on the market. If you don't have to go through those extremes, you're spending less energy. So it's, it's great to have this stuff, but we're going to get into it. Well, I'll just go right into it. Second most important thing in my backpack is a compass. If you're going to be doing Bigfoot research, you're in the woods, you have no excuse not to know how to use a compass. It's very, very, very important. And you don't have to get into plotting and mapping or anything like that. It's, it's as simple as getting your direction, picking a landmark, getting an exact degree on that landmark, and hiking to it. You stay on your, on, your, on, your, on your number. You pick another landmark at the same one, walk right to it. You can walk 20 miles through the woods and come back out in your tracks with a compass. 
So it's super, super important. This one right here doubles. It's got a signal. This right here, you can signal the plane. <clears throat> tells you how cold it is. It's just vital. You have to have one of these things in your backpack. Simple stuff. Fire starter. You need a couple of ways to get a fire lit, especially in this country. It's going to be wet. It's going to be nasty. And it's going to be hard to do, but you can do it. If you get stuck out there, you're done. I want a fire. I carry one little tiny fire starter stick, and I'll break that into little tiny pieces, and that's all it generally takes. Start really small. You don't have to start with a big fire. It's not going to light. you got to start really, really small and start building up to it. Light. You're going to want a couple of different sources of light. This one's not, probably not going to be enough. You, might, you may run out of batteries in one, and you'll have a backup. And that's stuff that's in my pack all the time. James just touched on something. I look at a backpack like an airplane. The reason airplanes don't fall out of the sky is because they have redundant equipment. Okay, I have redundancy in my backpack. I have two sources of light. I have at least two sources of fire starter. I have two nights. If you lose something, you still want to have it, right? Could mean your life. So redundancy in a backpack is a great thing. It's a little bit extra weight, but if you're careful, you can you can pack light. There's some great stuff. For instance, this right here is a fairly new product. It's an emergency bivy. This thing will save your life. It'll retain your body heat. It's tiny. It's light. And it goes in the bottom part of my backpack. It's very simple. If you get into a situation where you're exasperated, sweaty, or wet from the rain, you get yourself dry, you get in this thing right here, and it will save your life. Again, redundancy. Here's my second one. So, I have a small version and a big version. This doubles as a tent. I always carry some kind of rope or some kind of Something to uh, this stuff tied up with, and it won't happen. <laughs> Strike all this. <laughs> I carry an 1800 pound test ribbon, is what it is. It's made to pull fiber optic lines through orange pipe. You can let yourself out of a major situation with that. You can set up a tent with that. It's going to withstand the wind, and it's actually out of school over there. If anybody wants some, they can help themselves. Great things to have in the First aid kit, small, but will help. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't walk 20 feet into the woods without a first aid kit. Pain meds. There, there are some really good first aid kits that are available today. Oh, another thing. Always, always, always extra batteries for all of your equipment. I know a lot of you guys know this stuff. Maybe one person doesn't, so this first aid kit right here, it's a lifeline. Light effective, full of stuff. One thing I'm very careful about is when I use something out of here, I go to Rite Aid the next day. Or as soon as I get back to town, I replace it. Really, really, really important because you get out there, you cut yourself, you need a compression bandage, bandage, something like that. Oh, it's like, oh shit, I used that on my last trip. So I always make a mental note every time I take any item out of this thing and I replace it the next day. I probably replace the whole thing every year. Right. I'll make sure it's, it's still in good standings and working condition. I also bring a really good knife, ultra light. Dose. Yep. Two knives always. Yep. People lose stuff. So it's always great to have a second knife. I wear my first knife out on, on the outside of my backpack, my second knife I keep in here. <coughs> knives can knives are so instrumental in, in wilderness survival. You can take a rock and a knife and you can cut trees down. You can make shelters. They're really, really important. And along with that, a little cheap knife sharpener. Sharp knives, 10 times more effective than a dull knife. One more thing as far as illumination. Again, being redundant, two sources of illumination. This thing's really cool, got it at the auto parts store. You can just hook it up here, sit it on the ground, and you're, you're lit up. It's really cool, you have to carry it. You can take a branch, and you got a camp light. So I think this is five bucks at any Napa. It's a great backup source of illumination for your backpack. Sources of heat. The one that I bring because it's tiny. It's a cook stove. You can get your fire going. They make half sizes of these. They're little. This thing will boil water and I think it's like a minute and a half. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that little unit right there can light the sucker up in your tent and make sure you have ventilation. Yeah. But it can be below zero outside, it'll be 40 to 50 degrees in your tent. Quick. And you're surviving. I'm instantly warm. Any 
and your tent's gone. <laughs> I think we already touched on it. Fire extinguisher in that gap? Fire Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be too close with anything like that. Another thing James touched on, I'm going to touch on it again because I think it is critically important. And I gave it to him, so now I have poured. Now I do have some more seed. Again, I do actually practice what I preach, whether I'm on a day hike or a long off trail hike, cross country, whatever. I had my was in a different pocket. This stuff right here, one of the most useful things in your backpack. You can make shelters, you can dry your clothes over the fire by making string lines. Always have two sources of cord and make sure there's a lot of it. Same thing with like the first aid kit. If you use something, replenish it. Put it back and you've always got it. Derek, can you show me how that breaks down to the This particular stuff right here? Yeah. It can be you can take it apart, unbraid it, and then you have twenty times more. So that's that's good and important. Also one more quick thing. I always carry electrical tape. You guys all know electrical tape has a gajillion uses. So between your cord, electrical tape, and the tools that you're packing, your lightweight tools, you can build any shelter and you can do it quickly if you know how. Hey, that was pretty interesting. What to put in your day pack when you go on a hike. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do, and I think that will help. I really appreciate those guys doing that video. If you're interested in Bigfoot research, contact Derek at the Olympic Project. They go on hikes and they talk about Bigfoot subjects. If you don't believe in Bigfoot, well, they'll probably tell you to go to hell. But you know what? It's an interesting topic, and those dudes know all about what to carry when they go out in the woods. You know, for Survival Skills 101, I'm the Rhino. Are you prepared to look forward?